We're going to continue learning about butterflies. We are going today learn about the parts of a butterfly. Butterflies go through an amazing transition from eggs to larvae or caterpillars, then to chrysalids or pupas, and finally to adult butterflies. Our class butterflies have now emerged from their chrysalids and have emerged as butterflies. During this time of transition, they grow a whole bunch of new parts that help them live their lives as butterflies. We're going to go over those parts of their new body today so you can learn about what exactly a butterfly has grown and how God designed them that way so that they can experience the world around them. Let's get started. First and most beautiful part of the butterfly is its wings. The wings help the butterfly be able to fly from place to place. When the butterfly first emerges from its chrysalis, its wings are crumpled and wet. It has to dry for several hours before it's able to fly. You see in the butterfly really beautiful patterns. These patterns are formed by the wing veins. The wing veins not only form a beautiful pattern, but they also help to carry blood from the caterpillar's body to its wings so that they're able to be alive. The veins, just like the veins running through your body, get blood pumped from the heart to different parts of the body so that the butterfly is able to use its body parts to function and fly. Your body does something similar as well. Next part of the butterfly is its three body segments. Butterflies have three segments. The head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Let's talk about each one. The head is where the butterfly's eyes are, as well as their antenna. The antenna help the butterfly be able to sense the world through smell. The antenna also help the butterfly to balance. The next part of a butterfly's body is called the thorax. The thorax is where the legs attach. Although this picture shows the legs on the lower abdomen, that's actually not correct. The legs on a butterfly are all at the front, or the middle section. There are six legs, three on each side. The next segment of a butterfly's body is called it, its abdomen. The abdomen is also a very important part of the butterfly because that is where the butterfly's heart is. Without its heart, it wouldn't be able to be alive. Coming off of the thorax are the legs. Butterflies are insects, which means they have six legs total. One very important part of the butterfly that the caterpillar did not have is called the proboscis. Can you say proboscis? The proboscis is a straw-like body part that helps the butterfly to eat its food. The butterfly will fly around from flower to flower, and when it finds something that it seems tasty, the butterfly will stick its proboscis into the flower and drink the sweet, sweet nectar. Let's see how much you learned. I'm going to point to a certain body part and I'd like you to try to remember what part of the body, the body of the butterfly this is. Let's start with the biggest and most beautiful part. What are these called on the butterfly? These are the wings. Did you guess wings? Good job. How about 
What are these called on the butterfly coming off of its head? Did you guess antenna? Good job. That is what those are. The antenna help the butterfly to be able to smell and balance. How about the straw-like feature that helps the butterfly eat its food from the flowers? What is that called? That's a new word. That's the proboscis. Can you say proboscis? Do you remember what the beautiful lines are called that form those great patterns on the butterfly? It helps to pump blood through the wings. They're called wing veins. Can you say wing veins? Nice work. How about the six skinny parts down below that are attached to the middle section of the butterfly's body? What are those called? Those are legs. Good job. Now the three remaining parts we haven't named yet are the three segments of the caterpillar the butterfly's body. I bet you know the first one. What is the first segment called? That's the head. Good job. Do you remember what the middle section's called? I'll give you a hint. It starts with the sound <sighs> It's the thorax. Can you say thorax? The thorax is where the legs are attached. It also contains the muscles that the butterfly needs to flap its wings. Let's say thorax one more time. Thorax. Great job. Do you remember what this last segment is called? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an A. Ah. A. Ah. Abdomen. Abdomen. Can you say abdomen? The abdomen is where the butterfly has its heart stored. That is very, very important. There are some other organs in the abdomen as well, like its digestive system that helps it digest the sweet nectar from the flower and turn it into energy for its body. The abdomen is a very important part of the, cat, of the butterfly's body. Now that we have learned about the parts of the butterfly, let's draw a butterfly and label it with the different parts. Please pause the video and go find a piece of paper. You could get out your drawing journal or use another piece of paper around your house. You'll need your pencil box for this part of the lesson. On your piece of paper, let's begin by drawing the three segments of a butterfly's body. The head, thorax, and abdomen. Let's label these parts. Head, H-E-A-D, head. Thorax, T-H-O-R-A-X, thorax. And the last segment, Abdomen. This is a long word. I'll go slow for you. A B D 
O M E N abdomen. Good work. If at any point in the video I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause until you're caught up. Let's keep going. Attached to the head are the antenna. Let's draw two antennae. Antennae are skinny lines that have little tips at the top. These help the butterfly sense the world through helping them balance and smell. Let's label the antennae. This is also a long word, so I'll go slow. Ready? A N T E N N A E antennae or antenna. Next, let's draw on the butterfly's legs. Butterflies have six legs that are all attached to the thorax. Let's draw two sets of three. One, two, three. And we'll label those legs. L, E, G, S. I drew two sets of three which is six in total, two, four, six. Next, let's draw the butterfly's proboscis. The proboscis comes from the head and is a straw-like feature that helps it drink up its nectar from the flowers. When the butterfly is not using its proboscis, they curl it up in a spiral. Watch me. Go ahead and draw the butterfly's proboscis. I'll do it one more time. Now to label the proboscis, I've run out of room right next to the proboscis, so I'll have to draw a line on another part of the picture to get a label in. If you need to do the same, I think that would be just fine. So I'm going to draw a line out and down. And the word proboscis is a bit of a long word, so I'm going to make sure I have lots of room to label the proboscis. Let's write together. Ready? P R O B O S C I S proboscis. Whew, these are some long words. You are doing a great job. We're being scientists and artists today. Well, I'm almost done. I see a few things are missing from my butterfly. I definitely need some eyes on my butterfly. And even though butterflies don't have real mouths or smiles, I'm going to draw a smiley face on my butterfly. What else am I missing? Hmm, I have the head and the thorax and the abdomen. I have the proposis and the antennae. What am I missing? Oh, that's right. I'm missing the wings. How silly, Mrs. Kendall. The wings are the most important part of the butterfly. Let's draw some wings. The wings are attached onto the thorax. So we won't draw them on the abdomen. We'll draw both sets of wings up top. Butterflies have two pairs of wings. Let's begin by drawing the first pair. We're going to draw a curved line up. And then we're going to draw the bottom of the second set. We're going to draw a curved line out. Now, to finish up, I need to split these into two different parts so they look like two pairs of wings. 
I'm going to finish by drawing the bottom set of wings. A lot of butterflies have a certain um, pattern on the bottom wing that might curve out and then come in. Let's draw the bottom wing. I'm going to make mine a little bit wider, so if you want to do that as well, you can. And then I'll draw the top wing. And I'm drawing them overlapping. If you'd rather draw your wing something like this, like a B, that is okay too. Whatever you prefer is just fine. Now whatever you decide, whether drawing your wings like a big capital B or drawing some extra detail, we need to make some wing veins. So let's first label our wings with the word wing, W, I, N, G, wing. Then let's label the wing veins and draw some wing veins. Butterflies have all sorts of different patterns. So whatever pattern you draw is okay. They're all very, very unique. I'm gonna draw a couple of oval shapes coming off of the wings. And then from those oval shapes, I'll draw some lines coming out to the other sides of the wings. These are the wing veins to make sure that the butterfly is able to get blood pumping from all those different parts of its body so it can fly. Then let's draw a line from one of the wing veins that you drew and we'll label it wing veins. Wing, W, I, N, G. And then a new word, veins, V, E, I, N, S. Wing veins. Wow, you did such a wonderful job drawing with me and labeling. Great work. If you'd like to color your butterfly now, go ahead and do that. Add as many colors as you'd like. And when you're finished, take a picture and send it to me on Class Dojo.